Good morning and welcome to our monthly webcast. I'm Samir Mehta, your moderator. This is session number 82. You're going to find another very interesting and hopefully a very relevant case. Uh, it is not a trifurcating, unprotected left main, but it is something you will probably encounter in your practice today itself. Uh, without any delay, let me take you to the cardiac cath lab where Dr. Sharma and Dr. Kinney are standing by. Anu, good morning. Good morning. I must be honest, when I looked at the angiogram, I said uh, many uh, people will guess whether this is going to have significant uh, lesion with FFR. That is true. And uh, sorry and for that is the, that is precisely yeah. what people uh, want uh, to be challenged in their practice. Exactly, and this is what uh, knowing that uh, FFR has come uh, quite a bit in the whole equation of our decision making uh, and uh, routine practice, uh, whether bi bifurcation or non bifurcation, we felt that we have this uh, challenging case, which is not a truly complex, but there are a lot of emerging concepts which we are going to share, particularly with the imaging. Uh, with the FFR as well as the OCT. And uh, we are sorry for delay, we, there are little logistic issues, but uh, with that note, we are ready to start. Uh, just to uh, about, uh, if we can get to the slides, we actually overall, uh, we continue to have our 5,000 plus uh, viewers every month. I know that acutely, uh, during the live case, we have much low, but the overall, it continues to have a good, uh, I would say the resource material. So do you do you remember what was that case Anu was also asking in March when he, when we hit that uh, high yeah, number? Yeah, that was a very complex uh, bifurcation, uh, uh, the circumflex bifurcation lesion uh, with a rotational atherectomy. And just another one which is around uh, over 10 plus thousand uh, was also uh, is um, was the C, retrograde CTO. Yeah. Right, okay. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, I remember. That was a uh, bifurcation intervention of the CERC. Yes. So the, basically, these are our supporters, nothing new. And uh, the, this uh, today's case is a 61-year-old male with a stable angina and non-insulin dependent diabetes presented with uh, uh, class 2 angina and has a stress MPI, both infralateral and mild apical. Cardiac has revealed two vessel disease of the LED diagonal bifurcation, which we'll show today, and had a circumflex lesion, which were intervened. Uh, with a syntax score of 22 and LV good. Good medical therapy with uh, uh, more than 2 NT ischemic and uh, we just we show the angiogram. Anu? So this is LV that is uh, normal right coronary artery non-obstructive. Sir, both the strands are patent and this is where we are with the uh, LAD. I would say proximal about uh, 30 to 50, then you have the, you know, what we call as bifurcation. Just at the level of the diag, you would say less than 30, but after that moderate diffuse disease all the way to the um, uh, distal LAD. And if you see the diag at the ostium, maybe about 30 percent or uh, so. So, so angiographically, you would call it a borderline lesion, correct? Yeah, I mean intermediate, you can intermediate, call it 50 okay. to 70. All right, yeah, intermediate, so, okay. Yeah. Exactly. Excellent. But you are right. Borderline significant lesion, yes. All right. Okay. So this is where we are now. With also a stress test, which is intermediate. Uh, That's showing. it. Although apical was mild. Right. And it was more infralateral, infralateral. because of the circumflex, okay. which looks very good now. So clearly, it's always a challenge. You bring the case for the live case, and you say FFR and it's non-significant. What are you going to do? But I, whatever it is. I wish there was a way for me to ask the okay. viewers to poll and. Uh, and give their feeling as to how much the FFR would be. Would be both actually LED as well as the diagonal. Right. The key is the diagonal has osteal lesion, then there is another lesion in the uh, few millimeter below. Right. Yeah. Further down. Hmm. Yeah. So the two lesions in the diagonal uh, about, uh, and then of course you see the eccentric lesion, and uh, the issue comes here. Uh, basically, since we have intervened, uh, syntax was 22 uh, before, and uh, the patient had two. Uh, Zion's Alpine, we can go back to the our slide show uh, and uh, discharge is still as mild angina and of course today we wanted to show the FFR as well as the OCT in decision making of our, this bifurcation intervention. It is appropriate by the criteria because you still follow the same stress test although patient has become class 1 angina uh, with the maximum medical therapy. So quickly I wanted to just uh, go through this before we uh, delve into uh, the, this particular case, 
briefly, I know there were, I have presented uh, the few slides, but that can be a uh, you know resource material uh, for all our viewers. And two points we are going to talk about: the newer predictors of the side branch occlusion during main vessel stenting, and this is the trial which uh, uh, Dr. Kini has done with the orbit. And second is the latest data on the DAPT score for prediction of mace and bleeding post DES and the recent DAPT guidelines. So basically, uh, the what are the data basically? Which vessel occlude? Particularly, we all know if you have side branch stenosis, it will have a high occlusion. But we are talking about does not have a side branch uh, stenosis or less than 50 percent, then what are the predictors? One of them actually has really shown that it is the bifurcation angle. Uh, is uh, very much predictive and they have a cut off at 52, each quadrant had a higher occlusion rate and uh, on multivariate was clearly the high bifurcation angle and the plaque distribution at the same side of the side branch were predictive besides our ru routine our uh, stenosis and so. So why say that why th the high angle side branch had more occlusion compared to the lower angle or smaller angle which was the cut off here was 52. Clearly you can see that once you are lower angle the ostia of the side branch is bigger and this is one of the reason why the angle has come many times uh, in various studies although some studies have shown no and we will show you the data at our center also. But bifurcation angle has been predictive that lower bifurcation angle is associated with lower side branch closure. Now then. Uh, alt uh, ultrasound predictor is about the same uh, is basically that you have a uh, the MLD of the side branch and then the plaque the plaque area as well as the thinner multi uh, the main vessel plaque at the side branch ostium all are predictive on univariate as well as multivariate uh, analysis so that we have the data on the angiogram now we have the data on the IVAS and uh, so basically showing that yes there are factors which you can identify and work proactively. Then this is the data from the COBIS uh, registry of the bifurcation uh, same uh, what about the side branch occlusion it comes out to be the similar what have been said patient with acute coronary syndrome pre procedure diameter stenosis and side branch occlusion is usually associated with some event rate not a, if it is a large side branch of course will cause MI but uh, the lesser side branch uh, may not really cause MI but definitely have a higher mace rated follow up. So uh, this basically is that we led to our uh, the two publications uh, from our lab uh, with the, our imaging team and uh, we will talk about these two uh, papers which have come one being the orbit trial uh, and uh, second is the our consecutive series of our OCT in bifurcation cases. Anu? Yeah I think before uh, I uh, talk about the trial I just want to uh, thank the group. Uh, which include uh, mo all the attendings uh, of uh, Mount Sinai and our uh, you know the imaging team, the team uh, of uh, two people which is uh, <laughs> we have uh, Yulia and uh, Takahira. Uh, Takahira actually is an interventional cardiologist who is uh, visiting us uh, from Japan for two years and both uh, have been responsible to maintain the entire uh, imaging uh, database uh, including uh, analysis of this uh, OCT every vessel segment side branch uh, a millimeter to millimeter. So uh, Anu uh, my first observation here is that the Japanese are not only experts in CTO but they are taking over imaging too. Yes. As, yes. And as you know that Japan uh, probably highest in the world 82 percent of their PCIs are done with the uh, IVAS guidance of course some may be OCT but 80 plus percent and that people have said repeatedly that maybe that contribute to their lower strength thrombosis in the published literature for the from the Japanese uh, uh, cohort of patients. Fantastic. Yep. Now uh, just going back to the slide here I think the uh, uh, hypothesis be, uh, before we did this uh, study of bifurcation was uh, same that we all know if that is uh, you know side branch uh, stenosis um, and depending on the size of the side branch uh, we would uh, you know the interventionalist would, would uh, do it differently. If you have a side branch which is large which we are talking about 2.5 or bigger and there is no disease in the side branch which we are talking less than 50 percent 30 to 50 percent the always the question comes should something be done to the side branch should we wire the side branch or uh, go with what the teaching is just provisional stenting uh, without wiring just stent across and see what happens to this uh, side branch. 
Um, so, if you see what this study showed that a side branch occlusion again the definition of occlusion was based on angiography greater than 50 percent occurred in about uh, 30 percent of the cases and there was no clinical significance in these patients. Uh, knowing also that in all the other trials that angle always was an uh, important uh, factor in bifurcation. What we did was the uh, cal uh, you know calculation of angle was done offline with what is called as a 3D QCA and definitely angle did not pan out to be significant in this small 30 uh, percent uh, of the cases. And if you see that you definitely will see that of uh, the patients who had more than uh, a 50 percent uh, side branch uh, stenosis definitely uh, the lesion was uh, tighter uh, in the main vessel which again goes with the published data. Next. Yeah. And the key was that the in this study you did not have any side branch uh, stenosis predictive because all were had a less than 50 percent occlusion. Yeah. Okay. Then and this is the whole uh, crux of the paper which is the OCT image analysis what we found that the, pla uh, the vessel which had uh, side branch stenosis more than 50 percent majority of them had uh, significant lipid in the main vessel and what we call is a lipid arc and lipid arc was more than 250 degree which means it was more than 3 quadrant. So, it is very important uh, plaque with lipid and it was more than uh, 3 quadrants and they, uh, these are the ones which we know when you stent the main vessel the lipid probably gets uh, shifted into the side branch and another important thing that we saw was that there is also what is called as spotty calcium not calcific arc. Calcium arc did not make a difference which uh, is also we know that when there is a lot of calcium it's, it is probably the later part of the uh, older plaque that if there is calcium then it definitely the plaque will not shift, but um, uh, you know spotty calcium in the lipid which is uh, very common you see if it is there you definitely will see uh, the, the plaque shift into the side branch. But when we did multivariate analysis the only thing that panned out to be positive was just the uh, lipid in the main vessel and this is how the analysis were done uh, if you see we uh, you, you side branch and it was uh, you know divided into three just proximal you know to the side branch in within the in the side branch and distal to the side branch and at the level of the side branch we uh, made four quadrants and that is how you saw one and four was closer to the side branch and three and uh, uh, two were away from the side branch which is the contralateral part of the uh, side branch. And I know our study is showing that plaque is mostly in the contralateral part of the side branch you can show the contralateral part of the side branch um, and I think we I can tell you why that uh, showed a difference. And this is what uh, I am talking about a representative case why angle did not make a difference if you see here that is the 3D QCA which is on the leftmost corner that angle before and angle after never made a difference after stenting um, in all 30 cases. But what you see here the representative case is that well, the 1.6 millimeter squared is the uh, circumference of the ostium as measured by the OCT and after stenting that side branch ostium becomes 0 0.6 millimeter squared and angiographically that there was a significant uh, pinch in the side branch. And what you saw if you see where the arrow is is all lot of lipid in that uh, plaque. And this is a multivariate analysis again only the lipid arc turned out to be uh, uh, significant um, and that was also on the contralateral side of the plaque, but all the other parameters did not turn out to be significant in the. So, the conclusion for this paper that just uh, got published was that high lipid content of the uh, main vessel lesion and contralateral location of the lipid in the bifurcation area are significant predictors of side branch uh, stenosis. And if uh, since the lipid present was in three quadrants I would say one of the quadrant is closer to the side branch. So, I know we said that it is on the contralateral, but since we have majority of them about 60 percent of them had three quadrant that means the closer to the side branch also. Then 
what uh, we did was uh, looked into more than 100 cases, about 110 cases of bifurcation lesion, all cumbar bifurcation lesion in the database and uh, this came out in JAK intervention. Uh, what yesterday. that? Hmm? Yesterday. Yeah, came out uh, published yes. yesterday. This paper actually uh, got published yesterday, which showed in all comers the side branch uh, occlusion occurred in about 14 percent of the cases. And here again, analysis uh, done. If you see here, uh, 5 millimeters proximal to the side branch, 5 millimeter distal to the side branch, and again, what we found was that uh, lipid arc in the proximal part of the side branch was significant based on the uh, um, OCT and on based on the 3D QCA what we found was the diameter stenosis of the side branch was also predictive uh, in, uh, in this particular uh, series. Because here you took all the cases with the side branch lesion all or no comers, lesion. Yeah. compared to the orbitral they were all patients who had no side, branch. no side branch stenosis. So uh, now this I mean less than 50 percent I would say. The OCT is the same is the for the main vessel, so that if you have more plaque proximally, minimum lumen area that was associated with more side branch occlusion. Yeah. And same thing the lipid, pa, the lipid plaque arc. and lipid arc basically uh, consistent what new uh, on the small, um, uh, small orbit study and the calcific plaque uh, did not correlate. So, I think exactly the what came up on the orbit was what uh, noted in the larger cohort of our database of 134 cases of OCT imaging. So, in conclusion of this uh, how you know more than 100 series of cases what we found was same high lipid content of the proximal whale vessel that was based on OCT and side branch osteal stenosis severity was an independent predictor of side branch uh, occlusion after main vessel uh, stenting. These were all provisional stenting cases. So, therefore, this is I think uh, very new in the literature that OCT predictors. We had lot with the IVAS and NGO, but OCT was first time showed this lipid plaque and particularly arc of the plaque and the location of the lipid uh, content in a patients who do not even have osteal lesion of the side branch that uh, predicted the side branch occlusion. I think this will particularly come into equation when you have a large side branch especially diagonal you are seeing. 2.7530 diagonal with the 30 percent osteum and significant disease in the LAD, the uh, you know the question always comes do, do I just stent across come out or uh, should we take uh, extra, uh, extra protection measure in this particular. I know uh, this, this is region. this is absolutely fascinating very relevant to get so much more information from the OCT and I want to congratulate you as well as Dr. Yoshimura, I have the name correct I hope uh, and Dr. Motoyama. Yes. Congratulations to both of them and we look yes. forward to understanding a lot more from them. Uh, Samin, you are going yeah. to tackle the second issue yes, now? Yes, second issue while uh, uh, Anu is getting the uh, guide catheter no, and the ready for the is, FFR. Uh, yeah, I think we will do the FFR of yeah. the LAD also yeah. first yeah. and then we do the OCT. Right and by the time they will be ready with the uh, after the FFR. Uh, we um, uh, will come back. So, Samin, before yeah. you go into that, what would be your prediction of the FFR for the LED? I would say positive. We okay. all are predicting it is positive. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. And uh, <laughs> what I am going to do is we are going to show it live. Yeah. All right. Yes. When we start and adenosine uh, starts dripping, yeah. we are going to show it. Okay. Good. So, let us go to uh, while they are getting ready uh, on uh, wiring and uh, we just go with the our depth. Remember the all the issue was in the uh, earlier. 10 years ago we used to worry about the thrombosis, so that we made the adapt for one year. Then we started having the bleeding issue awareness, so therefore now question comes that with a better stent platform stent thrombosis is the lower issue. So the now bleeding has taken the center stage and that has led to the new guidelines that we are decreasing the depth duration and we now have the latest guideline from USA uh, by published in both circulation and AC um, in uh, our jack. Uh, in terms of what should be the duration of the DAP. So, basically what is story which everybody will agree that you need to give DAP for 3 to 6 months which is a ischemic benefit after one year you have a more problem you can continue but you have more bleeding and it is the intermediate time with the 6 to 12 months where whether you should give it or not give is the real issue and part of the discussion. And we actually have published also that once you go longer. Uh, more than one year, it is the bleeding is the one very which takes the center stage. 
Now, we know that we had done numerous trials of comparing the various durations of the DAP, 3 months, 6 months, 24 months, 48 months and so and so forth. And basically, what we learned is in simple that if you exclude one of the trial which is the DAP trial, that shorter DAP had equivalent mace, longer DAP had higher bleeding and there was no difference in stent thrombosis between the two groups. But if you take the DAP itself, which we all knew that there is always a, there was a 1 percent lower stent thrombosis and 1 percent additional lower MI. So, the 2 percent de decrease MI in the patients uh, uh, in the patients with the, the prolonged DAP and of course, it go it will happen that happened to be the higher death rate and higher bleeding. So, clearly we knew with the DAP study itself was the first one to show that there was a significantly lower, these are the patients who have survived one year, no event and then they were randomized to stopping the uh, your the, the end P2Y12 or you continue another 18 right. months. So, that is basically was. So, the, with that mm. they have developed now the well, the, the DAPT risk score and basically and that in from these 10,000 patients and they have come up with the uh, total risk score of minus 2 to 10 and of course, this is the distribution in the 11,000 patients and clearly the older the age you have higher b the event rate uh, but patients who are diabetes MI will get a point. So, higher the point where the depth should be beneficial and that basically showed that you have a low score less than 2 or higher score more than 2 clearly that you have a benefit of prolonged DAPT in patients with the higher score in terms of MI stent thrombosis, MACI, but what is the tra trade off? You have a higher bleeding particularly with a low risk score, not with a high score because high score many of these patients as I say the platelets are very active. So, giving that in the long term DAP may not be harmful, but key is in the low risk score you give a DAP for a long time you have a higher bleeding. Now, people say and of course, that little higher death rate uh, as shown here. The question was what about the ever eluting stent which was made about 50 percent similar message was there. So, clearly the depth score which you can okay, make start. that patients sustaining major bleeding uh, and or ischemic event one year after PCI, a prediction rule assessing Starting. late ischemic and bleeding risk to inform dual antiplatelet therapy duration showed modest accuracy in, de in derivation and validation cohort. This rule requires further prospective evaluation to assess potential effect on patient care as well as validation in the other cohort. So, clearly that this is uh, basically where we are uh, and uh, the, they also have in the post MI group the so benefit was even more uh, clearly the prolonged DAPT in patients who have uh, myocardial infarction paper just came out. So, this has led to the guideline update uh, from the ACC AHA of the 2016 and basically the questions were that should you prolong the DAPT duration and of course, they have used the DAPT score very important point very complex slide, right? but the most important aspect which is no, pertaining to us is here in two uh, the two group of patients one is stable patients and second is patients with acute coronary syndrome. What has the first time now American guidelines the DAPT duration in a otherwise st stable ischemic heart disease after DES is 6 months BMS 1 month. So, this is the first time now clearly that those who are not risk for bleeding you can continue longer that becomes your 2B further indication. So, very very important uh, and the second issue uh, comes is the patient with acute coronary syndrome you continue for minimum Diagnosis. one year that is the class 1 uh, indication Diagnosis. yeah class 1 indication. And of course, uh, this basically did not give rise to that one month, six months or prolonged in patients who are uh, acute coronary syndrome. So, okay. really it, it has made Can it. You show so, it? I would say that the, I am just going to uh, show that six month minimum some cases lower with the bleeding score you do a lower and extended duration patient with the prior MI diabetes mm -hmm. multiple stents and bifurcation stents and so and so forth. So, now we have done the I have the FFR of the diag is yeah. 0 0.87 now. Okay, it let's went down all the way up to like 0.83. Show the angiogram. Now it's stabilized yeah. at point, huh? yeah. 0.81 was the lowest right. for the diagonal. Okay, let's go to the LED. Can you show? Yeah, yeah. Show Almost you. exactly okay, good, what good. you had predicted. Yeah. yeah. Diagonal, yes. So now we are going to go with the LED. Okay, stop the adenosine. We stop the addition for the time being, and you just cross over. Yeah. Let's make it positive. You know. Now, 
from die here. It went to the die, so I just took it. Okay, now. So it is more difficult. Mm -hmm. yeah. There is some die there. Not okay, the resting is 0 0.80. Hello, hello, guy. What are you? Keep it says giving die, die, die. Okay, so we do not need the FFR. 0.79, no, no need for any adenosine for the LED. Okay, we are ready. Let us put do are our work. That? Yeah, yeah, it is yeah, showing. Yeah. Show that again. So, okay, so our prediction was correct, and now we are ready to do the OCT. Okay. Well, I, uh, we are going to keep this FFR. I want to do it after we strength. Okay? Yeah, we can do it later. That was Let's the plan. Then for the side branch, Let's so we stop. Leave it. Yeah, stop the and we will do it uh, later and here. Now we are going to show the AC, OCT. So therefore basically prediction which we have and actually we had uh, done uh, my fellow here uh, on the right side Mr. Sarin had made, uh, we had done the lot of work and we have sent it for uh, publication that which lesion looking at it 50 to 70 percent lesion which lesion is predictive right. and this is where the whole issue will come because there is very little written uh, in the literature uh, in the any very little in the literature that which uh, lesion is predictive and hopefully we get accepted and uh, we will be sharing that data with the uh, our our audience uh, uh, shortly. Samin, many questions have come in uh, regarding uh, uh, some of the topics you have discussed. Uh, the first one here is that uh, would there be any angle at which you would find it prohibitive to do a bifurcation, a side branch? No. I would say that very important because now since with a two strand technique, it is irrespective. So, what will you will do is what is the better way in the two strand technique? Maybe you want to do a mini crush or culotte in those very angulated lesion with the 90 or 110 degree angle. So, which is will be fine, and of course, it is a 90, you can always do a T stenting uh, and so. But uh, there is clearly there is no lesion which is prohibitive of uh, for the bifurcation stenting with the techniques which we know. Yeah, with some techniques, you have one uh, with the some techniques may be more preferred in a high bifurcation angle and compared to other. No, Another but question. The wiring, wiring of this uh, lesions which is 90 or and higher. above, right. that is technically challenging, but other than that, it should not prohibit you from doing any bio, uh, two strand strategy. Samin, the next that question is. is which do you think is more, more relevant in bifurcation, the angle or the calcification? Calcification. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you can. Yeah, good. It's like watching. Here it keeps going to some branch. Good. Okay. Okay. That should protect the. Yeah. Not here. Okay. Give me the OCT catheter. All right. So we are ready to show the OCT. So and for and uh, important thing also, you will see here what we have is called a score registration, which we have shown before. But I just want to highlight what the score registration is that we will be doing it with the cine. So, there is a little bit um, you know we definitely are going to use uh, dye here and then later on when you co-register based on exactly where the lesion is you will see it that will you can get the um, you know the OCT at that particular level. Anu, for your uh, main study of about 130 patients where you had a 14.5 percent side branch occlusion, uh, what was the fate of these patients? That is a very good point. No, yeah. fate means the side branch or occlusion were clinically significant in those cases. Yeah, but, but how, how, how did these patients fare? Uh, the did, the, uh, oh, did they have no, delayed the, hospital yeah. course or? Uh, I mean, pa patients who had CKMB elevation did have to stay one extra day. Right. Yeah. yeah. But none of them had a major issue because, major once because they happened, we opened them. Yeah. yeah. And all of them were we opened or even with a with a balloon, and uh, you know, not more than uh, the CKMB elevated, not more than uh, 50 CK. So how much effort should be expended in trying to open them? Oh. No, means these people we are talking the case that I showed mm -hmm. had almost uh, sub uh, it was a subtotal side branch. You saw the total occlusion of the side branch. So you have to open the side branch and uh, you know you definitely one you will have CKMB elevation. I would say uh, third to
to uh, patients also will have chest pain and EKG changes, no matter so, the diag is a 2 or 2.5. So in 2016, uh, would there be any role of uh, 2B3A for these patients? No. Well, I, they, they, we differ. <laughs> uh, those cases, I will give a 2B3A two boluses of uh, integral. Okay, okay, yeah, focus no, here on. yeah. Okay, so they're ready for the OCT. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I will do it, everything. Yeah. I did. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And get a 3038 uh, Zion. It did? It did not. It yeah. did not. Why? Why it is not pulling back? So we have a little uh, glitch, we are going to do it again. Okay. Okay. Enable. Why this uh, enable was not working? Actually, with this uh, co-registration with the newer one, the operator does everything. For some reason, when I pressed the pull back, it did not work. So we had to repeat it. So now you do the co-registration, you mark distal and you have to give two points, distal and proximal. Can you do that? Yeah, disconnect here. You can see it now? Yeah. Now based on that, you tell us that is it the side branch probably get occluded based on your OCT lipid uh, and calcium analysis. In that case, I definitely will protect the side branch by the wire. If you say that it's uh, the predictors are not there, then I can do it stand directly. <laughs> I'm very clear on that point because I am actually the pro Took the surf, uh, right? wiring the side branch fan. And there was an editorial last year uh, by Colombo also uh, because one of the study had a almost 18-20% uh, side branch occlusion and they did not protect the side, side branch with the wire. Okay, and to keep talking what you are showing. Yeah, they have to, we are doing it, hold on. Analysis is happening. Yeah. Co-registration takes time. Okay, now, no, went back to the circle. Okay, let's just do the OCT, forget the co-registration. co-registration. Yeah, well, you see that? Yeah. It gets confused. I think yeah. we probably need a LAO or yeah. but straight okay. AP. But let's see, we don't worry about co-registration. Let's go to our main points, which you have highlighted in uh, your publication of uh, Orbit and uh, the consecutive series. Okay, that's the side branch or no? No, no, no. Keep coming back. Keep coming back. Where's the side branch? Mm-hmm. The cursor is going on to their OM branch. That's a side branch? Yeah, that's yeah, that seems to be the origin. Yeah. Come back. Do you want to remove the cursor because it's confusing people? Take the co registration out. That's the side out. branch, right? This one. Yeah. Yeah. Take the co registration out right now, it will be wrong. Yeah, let's show it now. Yeah. This is the side branch. No, no, no. Come back. This is the side branch. This is the bigger branch. So there is osteal lesion at the side branch? No, you do not see the osteal uh, lesion here unless, yeah. Yeah, this is side branch. Okay. So, so most of it is a calcium if you think about it. Okay. What about the lipid arc? The whole question is about the lipid content, lipid arc. Do not see lipid, it is a lot of fibrous. Calcium fibrous. Okay, no wires, front across. No, but how would the lipid will look in this uh, OCT? No, 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 no. Yeah. Where? Let him do it. 
but that is uh, further down, not at the level of the branch. Yeah, if you see that, but this is not the, at the level of the side branch. Yeah, there is another septal there actually. Remember, there is a septal there, and there is a diagonal, both. This is diagonal. This is diagonal. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we need a summary statement summary. from you yep. based on the. Yes, uh, yep. Samin, yep. I think that is very important. Yep. Uh, exactly how does uh, OCT yep. help here guide you right. further management? That's it. That was the whole clinical point. Yes. Okay. What What was our hypothesis and what yep. have we learned here with That's the use of problem. OCT? And what will happen now once we stent the main vessel in this particular case? So whole purpose of the clinical implication of the study was that in case you know side branch can occlude, so you do preventive measure. Right. Wire it, 2B3A as you mentioned, give a more strong uh, depth therapy and so, but uh, the, that's the, uh, the point. So then now based on that, make the statement. No, it will not close, we told you. Yeah, so based on? Based on the, if you, that's what, why you guys keep changing, show where the side branch comes out. So, so, where we so the Anu, lipid. is it correct to say that because of the OCT prediction of there being uh, not much lipid content, you are willing to predict that it is not going to occlude? Yes. Okay. This is the little calcium there? Yeah, all that is calcium. Okay, all right, let's go. So, we have 3.2538 millimeter. Uh, Zion's Alpine, and we are ready to put it. Uh, although my heart does not believe in that, uh, if not a live case, I would have definitely wired the diagonal. But I think go with the science. I always believe in changing the practice based on the science and literature, and particularly our own data. So we'll see it now. Go in now. Go in or back a little bit. Huh? Don't put two stands. What two stands? There's yeah, I mean you, you look 30 to be fifty percent lesion also. Yeah, there's the lesion both distal and proximal. Yeah, so we no, need. Are to you covering the distal lesion? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. We are going to go distal and then yeah, proximally yeah. we so may do if you want one, one more. more. But yeah, make but sure it's not double layer at the level yeah, of the yeah, stent. Exactly. I mean, level yeah. of the branch, okay. side branch. Little die. Yep. No, you don't have to go. That is proximal. Come proximal. Maybe too far there. Yeah. Okay. One more picture. Okay. Good. Hmm? Okay. Go up. No, you're distal, you're covering now. Good, go up. What size? Uh, 3.25, and then we can take a 3.512. No, we have to do a, uh, the OCT immediately after stenting. Yeah, That's yeah, the only way you'll know. No, no, but after the proximal segment, we'll do 12. Mm, no, you didn't pre dilate either. Yeah, this is okay. Okay. Pre dilatation is okay. So we'll do it now. So, when we are doing the next one, let's uh, have it in a different view. Yep, 12. Good. Go up again. Samin, I, I must uh, give a very clear message to the audience here. Uh, uh, how, I mean, clearly we are learning a lot from OCT. It, it is uh, contributing enormously, the OCT predictors of occlusion and all. But uh, on a pragmatic, a real practice level, how, how much should people be using OCT for this? Okay, that's a very important uh, question because the question always comes that, is the OCT because it is not probably available in every lab right. versus uh, you know go with the IVAS you know IVAS uh, parameters. I think um, you know this is a good uh, learning period for us uh, to understand in this kind of lesions what uh, the predictors will be based on the uh, OCT and then subsequently see can uh, IVAS also predict uh, uh, similar because I can tell you lot of people are concerned and scared to do this uh, uh, this particular uh, imaging technique. Right. Uh, IVAS is uh, much easier and also saves dye. And uh, the more important actually with the in the, in the, in the very rapidly uh, our uh, absorb coming in the market and OCT will taking the center stage. Right. I think more and more labs will be doing OCT. Actually, I can tell you even in India at present, there are 32 OCT uh, machines which are being used. Uh, so that, uh, and knowing that India is a very big center for absorb uh, stent, so really uh, making a big headways. Um,
Okay, so we've got some issue distally, and the side branch is looking a little yeah. uh, pinched. Uh, no, no, but uh, that is flow, a usual look of the good. side branch. Yeah, flow is good. Let's put a three point yeah. five. Twelve. Proximal. Yeah. Okay. Twelve. Twelve. Twelve will be good. Yeah. Need to put a balloon distally, you think? To now that we can do just massage okay. with a low pressure here. So this is not a in the long lesion vertical displacement of the plaque, which I always uh, low pressure, uh, little inflation. We will do two atmosphere from this uh, 3.5. Now we are putting a 3.512. Good. Uh, again, same. Zion I thought you would uh, probably use a little longer. No, because remember we came up to the branch, and that's what we'll need now. Okay, little die. No, uh, no, 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 you are across the diag now. Pull back. That will definitely you will lose mm -hmm. the diag. Yeah, no. so, yeah, we didn't want longer just because of that region. Good. Pull back. No, no, no you are very close to the yeah, diag. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, little die. More. Okay. Good. Go up. So this is a three five. Three five uh, twelve. Yeah, okay. Again, Zion alpine. Was oh, 16 atmosphere? Good. Negative. You know, I was noticing in your bleeding score where you were showing uh, the different uh, factors contributing, renal failure was not there. Yeah. Yes. Go up. They have not uh, um, the part of. Uh, I was, think they, was that a surprise to you, or did yeah, I? It's a multivariate. Right. Uh, yeah. I mean, probably did not make it uh, negative. Okay. Go back, look at it again. And was there any difference whether uh, it was the clopidogrel or any of the newer agents? Yeah, those did not make a difference. Make a yeah. difference. Okay. Got two atmosphere here. Samin, so, how is the progress? Uh, I have a note here to announce that uh, people can uh, continue to register for the CCBBC. Yeah. Yep, so we, that's coming up very good. Okay, negative. Uh, and uh, we are uh, started uh, accumulating the cases. For that particular, for our. So um, give me a, a 30 second summary of why somebody should uh, come besides uh, visiting uh, wonderful New York City. Yeah, same, that we continue to uh, answer our questions um, uh, in terms of uh, teach people the various techniques which we are doing this monthly live, and there is a more intense way, and uh, getting the other faculty uh, opinions, the latest uh, tips of the trade. Uh, with the nice uh, short lectures and so on. So, who should be, what should be their effort? Uh, they should be coming here to learn coronary or structural? I would say the both because now the structural is becoming almost 25 percent of your uh, interventional volume or in some cases uh, some centers. So, everybody wants to learn. Patient does have chest pain and now we, we see that clearly the osteal of the side branch is involved. You do not even have to do FFR. Region is because you have a slow flow, the me two flow in the vessel. No, I agree. I agree, but uh, who knows where your uh, first strength has uh, gone now. Remember, no, this no. all you cannot uh, put uh, two strengths closer to the side branch. Yeah. So, either way, are you planning to put a wire down yeah, it? Right now, we have to because patient have yeah. chest pain also. Yeah, yeah. No, no, let me do the OCT. Do you want to post dilate uh, some area? So, I mean, some people would even put in. Uh, 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 a short uh, 8 millimeter stent distally, you do not think so? There is need, uh, just a balloon dilatation should yeah, do yeah. it? Yeah, we, I mean we can take some additional picture on that. Okay. And one can uh, hope at uh, your uh, live uh, conference for this year to see uh, both uh, mitral valve as well as uh, maybe even the watchman. Uh, well, I mean uh, the the no, watch. No, not no not yeah, the watchman. Not okay. the not the watchman. Uh, but uh, the, but the and question no is mitral and mitral, no mitral remember it still takes quite a bit of time. Right. So although clinically we are doing it now about two cases per month, but uh, I think it still will be. Uh, from the time period point of view, it takes quite a bit of time. So, so we emphasis more on the aortic still. Yeah, that's okay. right. Okay, you think we will be able to see here without circ involvement. And this year's meeting is back at Mount Sinai? Or that's it. Back okay. in 
for the demand. Now, you clearly the distal segment will be able to see onto a little distal. So, we can see that uh, there is any dissection or anything. So, if there is a dissection distally, you definitely will uh, put a stent distally also. Okay. Right? Did we connect? Hmm? Okay, let me uh, do the enable again, right? Samin, what did you think about this uh, more recent? Uh, uh, there's a little comparative trial. It's more of a long yeah, yeah. study with the use of high dose tyrofiban. Are okay, you using start, start. it? Start. Yeah, we actually know, but I, I would say that you know I think those days are of the tyrofiban, and so the two B three. Yeah, the two B three A's are uh, over. Over. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. But same that that may make a difference in patients uh, who are using a. Uh, that you are using a short uh, or clopidogrel, but once you use this uh, more uh, uh, active agents, uh, more potent uh, PTY uh, 12 inhibitors of clopidogrel or ticagrelor, I think the role of 2B3A has really, really minimized. Have you uh, used uh, for uh, PCI, particularly for ACS, any cangrelor? We actually have not yet. So, we are in the process of getting into the, our formulary for the time being. You think uh, so you'll I'm use it more than the surgeons? Uh, well, probably yes. Yeah, I think uh, some of those cases, acute coronary syndrome and, and so. And STEMI maybe. Yeah. And the STEMI, yes. We can take a 2.5, 12 compliant balloon. Okay, AK, tell us what's going yeah, on with there. Do what about the distal edge? Oh, that's a this is a distal edge. Little uh, intimal uh, disruption Maybe there, or yeah. nothing yeah. much. You, I think you could just do a balloon and leave okay. it. Okay, excellent. See the distal edge? Yeah. It's one part. That's it. That's upside bind. Yeah. Right there. Which one? This yep, one. Yep, yep. You should remove a little bit. Again. No, no. Hold on. Let's do the rotate it. Yep, yep. You see the side bind? Yeah, yeah. That one. No, that's the side branch here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that yeah, one. Yeah. A little more shape on that wire, or? Yeah, I think we, or we go with the main wire. Yeah, right. This is always uh, helpful yeah. that you go with the wire which you had, yeah. and pull back and put the side wire into the. Vessel, but let me try once again, little die. Now with the torquer, because some cases yeah, you need yeah. to. Even though there was not that much, there was a lot of liquid proximal, but at the side there was just calcium. I would also, I think, at uh, this stage, uh, I've been wanting to do this for a long That's time. It. But today, when you presented the data from Fuwai Hospital, yes, I am sure people do right. recognize that has the. Highest volume of PCI in the world, and I'd like to congratulate no, Dr. Hongbing Yan, a good friend from there, and Dr. Ranlin Gao. Almost 16 to 18,000 PCIs a year. Yep, uh, in Beijing. Remarkable center. Yep, absolutely. I was also thinking that maybe you are going to, uh, maybe in, in one of the n uh, next session or something, discuss about uh, the new data which has come on uh, uh, bifurcation from Korea, the SMART strategy. Yeah, SMART. No, but remember we presented we SMART uh, one time about a, yes. one year, yes, now the three year right. is basically saying uh -huh. that you leave the side branch alone. Right. So, uh, at one year there was no difference, but uh, the, the recent data came on the three year is Do that uh, is it's okay branch? to leave the side branch alone. But uh, they, they provide also very interesting uh, analysis into a different strategy between uh, various bifurcation sites. Yes, left main and not, uh, the, the left main and non-left main and so. So now we have wired the, uh, the diagonal. The diagonal, we just open it up and then we yeah. need to do a kissing balloon or just a serial mm -hmm. balloon dilatation. Two, two five balloon? Yeah, this is the 2.5 balloon. Okay. So, uh, Okay, and get me a 3.0 or 3.2530 high pressure balloon. 12. Uh, just wait few seconds. Pain will be okay in few minutes. Negative. 
So patient definitely was having the pinch uh, from the side branch. Right. Uh, although EKG changes were not there, but definitely a. And we will ask uh, now Dr. Keeney about this. Uh, what did we see? So side branch coming very good. Uh, we can use a second balloon now. You want to complete on your OCT? What are the findings? No, no, we can see the side branch. Show, but go show, back there. Show the, show the OCT. Don't touch. Good. Now get uh, our CEO. Right there. Yeah. That's our side branch. That, uh, this is the plaque shift uh, dissection. What is the region? Or just the stent struts or the side branch osteum? Combination. No, no dissection, but it is the, just the plaque and the stent strut across. But you have a stent, I think even the proximal, proximal stent, uh, you know the proximal lesion uh -huh. uh, had more lipid than the one just at the level of the diagonal. Okay. Uh, both Anu and Samin, I want to leave the viewers with uh, something uh, very relevant uh, in their uh, progression of imaging. It is uh, quite clear that uh, so far as uh, BVS would be that uh, OCT appears to be the more helpful strategy, is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. And since most of uh, the institutions are not having OCT, it may be just the right moment for them to start uh, becoming more familiar with it. Uh, no, it all depends uh, how uh, I think uh, FDA is going to come out with what is the imaging. They are not going you to say it is mandated. Yeah, with you. with BBS. Yeah, they right. will say imaging. They are not going to say what kind of imaging. I understand, so but it does appear to be clearly beneficial for that uh, subset of patients with BBS application, no? Yeah. No, but yeah. as long as you know the, uh, oh. you know that it is uh, well opposed, yeah. right? Which you can even do with the IVUS. I don't want uh, everybody think no, that I, after this, yeah. everybody exactly. they have to shift only to OCT. Exactly. You know? No, that's not the message we are giving. What what is uh, Samin? You you do a lot more work internationally with the BVS. Uh, what is uh, what is emerging as the imaging modality? Yeah, no, I think the somehow uh, go to the main vessel. Yeah, the twenty. I mean, I don't want to necessarily use India as the only uh, uh, place to look Negative. for this e yep. expertise, but yep. go ten. Stop making Good. noise, Negative. guys. Yeah. Good. Uh, yeah, no negative. Now we are done here. No, the key is. That OCT, I would say, should be used if available in first your few 15, uh, 20 cases of uh, learning absorbed. experience to yeah, get a, okay. basically to understand what you are seeing and what does it usually mean. Right. That's the key. Because so, now, so far, I think uh, most of us are very impressed with the beautiful pictures, but we don't know really how to interpret them and to beneficially use it. Ab absolutely. So this is exactly the point. Uh, uh, which I, I will try to make uh, in that case uh, that OCT will be and that's what the we said in our uh, last month's the webcast. Don't need it. Yeah, the last month's webcast we said that uh, that OCT n doesn't have to be all the time, but definitely in the beginning. And so, in your day-to-day -day cases, what is your percentage of OCT use? No, it's all research related. Right. Okay. And is it uh, being reimbursed? OCT, yeah, yeah, yeah. The again, you know, the once you have inpatient, it's a part, the part of the DRG, and so. Well, you have the one, uh, just the dog. Yeah, no, just wanted to see that there's nothing more so need to be done there. Yeah, good. Yeah, I would so uh, distal tend to put in a stent distally, no? Yeah. Good. So I think that may be causing a slight pain. Right. Uh, you want to give her 308 or 12? Uh, another cent, yeah. Yep. And there is another question which has come for you. What is at present your uh, use percentage of prasugrel and ticagrelor? Yeah, actually the ticagrelor now because we being the main site uh, for the twilight uh, has really increased. So overall still about 65% are getting the, uh, the clopidogrel 
and if you take all patients including acute coronary syndrome and non syndrome and now in the past of the 35 percent 70 80 percent used to be uh, presagrol now it has reversed so now we have more uh, ticagrelor and because of uh, very simple reasons that being the part of uh, the twilight uh, which is the take of the aspirin after uh, um, three months in these patients uh, and uh, stable patients kind of That should take care oh, of this yeah. lesion. Yeah. You actually were predict predicted that earlier. So yeah, we it needed some, somehow it yeah. did not have yeah. a good good feel to it and it is such a large nice. vessel. Yeah, let me pull back one millimeter nice. and then we will take nice. yeah. Go up. Are you doing any live transmissions for Euro PCR? No. No, we just uh, uh, actually the, the nothing uh, the Euro PCR we actually had never. Uh, uh, done the transmission uh, for the Euro. We have many other meetings and so on and so forth. Good. Huh? Yeah. Good. 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 Analysis or any statement you want to make? The no, remember the OCT. Sure. Yeah. No, but what statement you want to make with the OCT uh, in this particular case? I think uh, one thing I can tell you: the way we have placed the stent, probably. Remember, we have now two stents. One there is this proximal lesion which we never paid attention to. We should have stented from the proximal and then put another stent distal. Not have uh, two stents at the level of the side branch. Then whatever. If you go back here. We were still probably you could have left after this particular stent, right? After this particular stent, which is just covering that. And remember, I want a little distal, but that's okay. Yeah. But now patient pain is gone. Patient. This one you could have still fine. left it alone. Okay. Here you could have just left it alone. But then once you put the second stent, that is when we lost the. Side Although branch side branch started pinching a little bit, but the whole question is how do you interpret the OCT findings? Uh, uh, because we need to come to the conclusion in this particular case now. No, based on the OCT, there was no lipid and there was just a chunk of calcium there at the level of the side branch. Uh, we should not wire the side branch. Okay. And we showed it also, FFR was negative. Yeah. No, but pre. Yes. Yeah, pre FFR was yeah, negative yeah, also, yeah, side but, branch. No, but remember side branch, what happened after the stenting? You have the plaque shift, little thrombus, maybe micro dissections you may not see. It could be the factor, but anyway, end result. Anytime the side branch. So coming back to the point which you asked earlier on those 107, uh, 34 cases with the 17 having side branch occlusion, very little clinical event. Clinical event is very little yeah, because, because you whatever open close you you open them. Yeah, you open right. them. Now this guy still will have some enzyme elevation, but uh, probably less than uh, three times normal. Yeah, EKG. We can show the six lead EKG. So let's uh, come to the conclusion at the same time. We show the EKG now. It's fine. Pain is gone. EKG is absolutely uh, baseline. Yeah, looks yep. just okay. Good. So the, let the our take-home message. We go go back to the slides that even non-disease side branch are prone for occlusion post stenting, 10 to 30 percent of cases, uh, and is best predicted by lipid plaque arc and presence of spotty calcification on OCT. Hence, imaging may help to stratify side branch protection during main vessel stenting. And then, of course, the DAPT score is a useful tool to identify post DES patients who will benefit from prolonged DAPT. Recent DAPT guidelines, based on numerous randomized clinical trials, have shortened DAPT duration to six months in routine DES patients with a stable CAD. However, patients with ACS, MI, and diabetes and complex stenting will benefit from prolonged DAPT therapy. So three questions, following statement is false or the predictor of side branch occlusion post main vessel stenting based on the OCT analysis. Side branch osteostenosis is predictive, lipid arc of proximal main vessel is predictive, lesion calcification and arc are predictive of the side branch closure, TIC5 is predictive and uh, diameter stenosis of proximal main vessel is predictive. So clearly we have shown uh, based on the data. Second. The following DS implantation, which group of patient will be suitable for prolonged DAP? Diabetes, acute coronary syndrome, MI, patient with early stent thrombosis and all of the above. Uh, third, long term DAP is uh, 
DAPT in the DAPT trial is associated with the following except significantly lower mortality, significantly higher bleeding, significantly lower stent thrombosis in acute coronary syndrome, uh, significantly lower MI and significantly lower MACE. So, clearly these are the three questions which will be available on our uh, the, uh, the webcast. Anu, any final words from you? at the original uh, OCT, if you see that. So, we can go know. back on the floor or what the this uh, is the OCT? This is all lipid. Huh? Yeah. You see that? This is all, you can you see, this is all lipid, right? Yeah. Yeah. All this is lipid arc, but this is just before the diag. So, the second stent actually pushed all the lipid out. If you can, this is the proximal. If you can see that mark where exactly where we put the 3, 5, 12 stent. Proximally. Are you able to see that mark? That is where? Yeah, proximally we see it. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. And the 3, 5 and the that, if you see this is all lipid. That is the proximal. And you could see it after we did the second strength, probably the side ground, uh, side branch got worse. That is okay, still okay? Yeah. Yeah. Everything is all, you know, fine, but these are all the learning. Uh, and try to incorporate in our practice and hopefully the whole uh, The question always today. go, if this case is given to me again, second, second case, I will do the same way, not wire the side branch stent across and come out, but only thing I will do different is take the stent from the proximal lesion to the mid to distal lesion and put a second stent distal. Or, or, or you can Means put a stent you at cannot the level of have the septal. two stents close to the side branch. That, that is the learning point. You cannot have two stents close to the side branch. You can have one stent across the side branch. I, I, I think that is a very practically useful point and I think as my final observation, I, the, these are uh, hypotheses which are uh, generating a lot of interest and I am sure in subsequent cases we will be able to reinforce them. Yeah. Uh, anu and Samin, thank you so much. Also to your uh, Japanese uh, fellows. Uh, I hope the viewers have found this useful. Uh, sorry, we were Yulia, able to don't start forget the case. Uh, Yulia. Yulia. Oh. Yeah. And, and non Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but I, I see she's, one. one, she's one uh, Yulia is from yeah. Russia. All right. Russia. There yeah. you've got a full international crew They're there. Nearby. Yeah. Congratulations <laughs> again. We'll see you May 17th for the next session.